Russia launched a new and deadly attack across Ukraine overnight. Explosions could be heard nationwide from the capital of Kyiv to the Black Sea coast. Ukrainian officials say the strike came in waves and from different directions. They claim air defenses intercepted 29 out of 30 cruise missiles, but falling fragments still killed one person in Odessa. Joining us from Kyiv, Ukraine, is James Landale from our news partners at the BBC. So, James, what more can you tell us about this latest round of strikes on Ukraine? Uh, the month of May is pro proving a very familiar round of uh, strikes here on, on Ukraine across the country, not just the capital here. Essentially what happens is overnight we hear explosions, we see smoke on the horizon. And there are missile attacks. They are sometimes launched from the south, from the sea, from the Black Sea. Sometimes they're launched from the Russian bombers to, far out to the east over the Caspian Sea. And the explosions we hear are the Ukrainian air defense missiles intercepting the Russian missiles and exploding over the city sometimes, causing some damage in the, in, in on the ground as the debris falls. We know that um, overnight, two areas in the east of Kyiv suffered fairly reasonable um, damage, but as far as we know, nobody died. But as you say, most of those missiles, according to Ukraine, were, were shot down. One got through. And we know that in the south in Odessa, there was one person who died uh, and two people were injured. So a familiar pattern. And the trend now is Russia targeting not just critical national infrastructure, i.e. power plants, it's also targeting Ukraine's air defenses. It wants to weaken and deplete them as much as possible. Well, China's special envoy met with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky and other officials today. I'm wondering, James, if you can tell us what came out of this meeting. Is there any indication that Beijing might help push forward a negotiated peace? China wants to be seen as a mediator. Uh, the problem it's got is that uh, neither side wants to talk at the moment. China says it has a peace plan, a settlement. Uh, but what was interesting in all the meetings that uh, Ukrainian ministers had with the Chinese diplomat, they all made it clear to say, look, yes, we're in favor of a ceasefire once Russia has let, taken its forces out of Ukraine. Because there's a contradiction in the Chinese position. They say they want a ceasefire, but they also say they want territorial integrity and sovereignty to be protected. The problem is, Ukraine says, and we, the Ukrainian foreign ministry made this very clear, if you accept that Ukraine's territory must be protected and uh, its sovereignty protected, Russia's forces have to leave, and China is not calling for Russia's forces to leave. So I think Russia's, uh, China's um, envoy will leave, has left Kiev with a much greater sense of Kiev's position. Uh, he's now going on, the Chinese diplomat, to other European capitals to assess what they're thinking too. Hmm. Well, let's turn to the Black Sea grain deal, which has been extended for two months. Russia's foreign minister is calling that time period decisive for the future of the deal. Why is that? Well, the thing about the grain deal that is agreed, um, not between Russia and Ukraine, but, but between the two countries and the United Nations and Turkey, is that it doesn't last very long. At the moment, it only lasts about a couple of months or so, and so it has to be renewed every couple of months. And each time the renewal m moment comes up, Russia uses that moment as a point of leverage to try and get more concessions from the West. Essentially, what Russia's looking for is a relaxation of the sanctions regime so that it can get a little, little bit more of its own agricultural products out of Russia onto the market. The West is obviously resisting that. There's a discussion about that every time. But the reason it matters is because if that grain deal is not agreed, then grain stops coming out of Ukraine's southern ports onto the global market. And if that grain doesn't reach the global market, prices rocket. Now, for you and me, we can cope maybe with a few extra pennies on our, on our loaves of bread. But in developing countries, it has a huge damaging impact on their economies. James Landale reporting from Kiev for us. James, thank you.